Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Autogen, which is a multi agent conversation framework using large language models. So let's get started. What is Autogen? Right? So, Autogen, as I mentioned, is a framework for development of large language model applications using multiple agents that can talk to each other uh, to solve tasks. Right? So now you might be thinking, why multiple agents are required to solve tasks? Well, uh, in general, it is observed that they're required so that each agent can actually uh, take up a individual role, a separate role, and therefore multiple agents sort of encourages divergent thinking, improving the factuality and reasoning, reducing hallucination uh, through multi-agent debate. Right? Uh, also, it allows effective uh, tool usage and execution with potentially you know, autonomous troubleshooting through interagent interaction. So one agent can say, hey, let me verify your output, and the other agent can actually just nicely uh, verify that. Right? Uh, these autogen, in the autogen framework, the agents are customizable, they are conversable, and seamlessly they allow human participation. Now, what does that mean? That basically means that uh, a particular agent in Autogen is conversable. So conversable basically means that the agents can uh, receive messages, react to messages, uh, respond to messages, right? That's that. Also, an agent can basically make use of either LLMs or human or tools. So, or it can be a combination of those, right? So for example, um, this is basically an agent which makes use of LLMs. This is an agent which makes use of human input and the Python execution code, right? So that's that. Uh, Autogen also allows for multi-agent conversations. So it, of course, allows you to create uh, agents which can be LMs, human, or tool. It also allows you to have conversation between these agents. For example, here is a conversation between uh, an agent which uses LLM versus an agent which uses uh, human and a tool. Okay, um, so, so that's that. Now, um, uh, further, the third interesting thing in Autogen is that besides agents and conversation, it allows it also allows for various workflow patterns. So for example, these are two different patterns, a joint chat pattern where three agents are, you know, jointly, um, you know, talking to each other. And also, you know, there is another pattern like a hierarchical chat pattern, right? Where there is basically a master and then there are other agents who are sort of reporting their, their outputs to the master. Okay? Uh, so these kinds of workflow patterns allow for different levels of conversation autonomy, number of agents that you see, right? And the agent conversation topology. So here is a particular kind of a conversation that can take place between two agents. So you see uh, in, in the lower picture here, you know, there are two agents which are participating to be able to get a task done. Okay. So one of them is a user proxy agent. The other is an assistant agent. The user proxy agent can make use of a human or a, a Python code executor, right? Uh, and the assistant agent makes use of an LLM as a tool internally. <laughs> so. And you know, as a human, the human may come and uh, prompt uh, saying, hey, they want a chart of Meta and Tesla stock price, uh, stock price change uh, year to date, right? Um, now, you know, they basically put up that particular message and the message goes to an assistant agent. Assistant agent can basically say, execute the following code. It can give out particular code, okay? And in general, uh, you know, the assistant agents are essentially prompted to generate code. Now, uh, when you when you uh, when the when the user proxy agent gets the code, uh, it basically uh, understands that it must uh, use the uh, code executor so as to essentially try to execute, and then you know it may get an error. Error package Y finance is not installed, and then uh, the LLM agent can say, "Oh, of course, I sort of thought that you already knew that Y finance has to be installed. So please first pip install Y finance and then execute the code." And then you know uh, the code agent basically says installing, and then it basically runs the code. It outputs a nice chart. Uh, but then the human can then play a role here, uh, you know, authoritative role here and say that, hey, no, please plot uh, percent change, not really, you know, the actual dollars, but percent change. Okay? Uh, and then once the human participates here and says so, the code, the, the, the LLM uh, assistant agent essentially gets into action and then gives the revised code, which basically the code executor module uh, can, uh, can execute. And then here is the revised chart. Okay? So in, in this case here, you see basically the topology just consisted of two agents which were trying to solve a task through conversation. And specifically here, the task was basically to draw a plot using data from the web. The user proxy, uh, the user proxy agent essentially has two tools, the human tool and uh, or rather the human and the executor tool, uh, Python executor tool. And it can basically seamlessly engage a human or use the shell um, uh, whenever, it, whenever it finds appropriate. Okay. 
So now let's look at details of how auto -agen, uh, autogen works. So how do agents work and how do conversations and conversation patterns work? So well, um, an agent, uh, uh, and, and by the way, autogen is not uh, the only package in this kind of uh, uh, work, right? So there are other such similar uh, systems which uh, allow for single agent systems and multi agent systems. So single agent systems include things like auto GPT, chat GPT plus, which is basically an enterprise version. So you have to pay for it. It's a premium version with the uh, with code interpreter or plugin. And of course, you might already know about Langchain agents and transformers agents, which are which are basically single agent systems. Now, what is interesting about Autogen? It's it's a multi agent system. And it is sort of comparable with other multi agent systems like Baby AGI, Camel, and Meta GPT. Okay. So agents in uh, uh, in Autogen can actually be of uh, three main kinds uh, by default: assistant agent, user proxy agent, and group chat manager. They are all uh, inherited from the class responsive agent, which is a generic agent, right? Now, assistant agent basically makes use of LLM. User proxy agent makes use of user or a code executor, like basically uh, you know the shell interface or the Python interface. And then group chat manager basically manages a group of agents using an LLM. Okay? And in this work, they basically used uh, GPT-4 as the default LLM. Now, each of those agents uh, essentially have a bunch of properties based on which they are defined. They're 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 uh, they're configured in that senses, and they maintain internal states based on the sent and received messages. Um, such that they can then participate in a conversation. Okay. Uh, multiple, uh, so so you know uh, these LLMs now again the default is GPT-4, but then uh, uh, Autogen supports multiple LLM inference APIs with various inference settings like uh, result caching, error handling, message templating, all of those basic properties, basic basic uh, uh, you know features are supported. Okay. So uh, you know, it also has uh, uh, this access to the human uh, interface here. Uh, and uh, this is pretty configurable. So, uh, and you can define your own human in involvement levels and patterns, uh, including uh, frequency and conditions for requesting human input, and also the option to uh, for for humans to sort of skip providing any input at at different points in time in the conversation. Right. Uh, so, uh, as you notice, uh, for the LLM agent, the default system message sort of prompts the LLM agent agent to generate uh, Python code, so that. Uh, uh, Python code or shell code, so that uh, you know other agents uh, like the user proxy agent can actually take that Python code and execute it uh, and uh, uh, continue the conversation based on the results obtained after execution. Okay. Now, how do conversations in Autogen look like? So, uh, as we know, uh, Autogen supports multi-agent conversations. Agents basically have the capability to send messages, receive messages, and also generate replies based on the received message. Okay. Uh, in fact, every agent essentially has a default auto reply which basically means that once the agent sort of receives a message from another agent, it automatically invokes a generate reply and sends the reply back to the sender, depending on the kind of message it received, right? depending on the inputs that it received as part of the message. Now, there are uh, different kinds of conversation patterns in a supported in Autogen. So, uh, for example, you know, uh, it could be fully autonomous conversations versus conversations with humans in the loop. So, the different levels of autonomy from a human interaction involvement perspective. Okay. So fully autonomous conversations basically mean that uh, once the agents have been configured and uh, you know uh, they have been connected to each other in a, a topology, for example, there are two agents here. You know uh, they develop triggers. Uh, uh, so, so so the developer writes triggers uh, for conversation between among the agents, and then the conversation just proceeds automatically with no extra effort from the developer. No human involvement is required. Right? Versus on the other hand, there could be other kinds of situations where human involvement is required, and there could be then conversations with human in the loop, uh, wherever human authority is needed, and cases where human hints are sort of desired to, uh, to, to leverage the human intelligence to be able to solve the task at hand. For example, complicated maths problems. Right? So multiple humans can also participate in the conversations. The system is configurable to have multiple user proxy agents, in which case you can actually have multiple humans participating in these conversations as well. Now, conversations could be static or dynamic. So static conversations are ones where the topology of these agents which are connected in the multi-agent system is sort of fixed. While dynamic conversations basically means that the agent topology changes depending on the actual flow of the conversation uh, under different input problem instances. So there are two ways to sort of implement this uh, um, this uh, dynamic conversation. One is by, uh, uh, by, by registering auto reply. So in the sense that, uh, uh, for example, in a group chat manager kind of a setting, um, uh, you know, uh, it it lets the LLM, you know, uh, the LLM decide who will be the next speaker in a group. Um, so, um, you know, there could be several uh, bots in the uh, several such agents in the group chat agent managed by the group chat manager, right? 
and the group chat manager depending on the current context of the conversation uh, current topic of the conversation it may uh, choose to uh, you know allow one of those speakers to speak okay? and i will talk about this in more detail later okay uh, on the other hand the other way of basically doing this is to have a function call agent uh, or a function call based dynamic conversation so for example you know what you see on the right side is basically a conversation between three different agents uh, they are trying to achieve a particular task, a, a, B, and C. So A is a user proxy, B is an assistant, and C is also an assistant, right? So assistants are basically uh, driven by LLMs, and user proxy, of course, is driven by a human or a or a or a code executor, whether it is Python or shell script code executor. Okay. So now, if we, if the user if if the user proxy wants to get some task solved, it basically first registers with B, saying that hey, uh, you know, um, uh, whenever uh, uh, B comes up with some response. Uh, a is going to auto reply. Okay, so that's basically a registration of an auto reply. Uh, a, a is the human, uh, A is the user proxy with a human, and therefore the A is the one who initiates a chat and then asks B, hey, solve some problem. Okay, so now uh, when B responds back, this is the auto reply that has been registered, auto reply function that has been registered uh, for A to respond, right? So whenever B comes back with some response, if B sends code, you know, A is going to execute the code and then get the output. If the output is great, it's good. But if the output is an invalid JSON, it basically invokes another agent called C, you know, so as to basically create a valid JSON out of it, okay? So this is how the conversations between agents uh, happen. Uh, and uh, for dynamic topology, in general, C was not a part of the topology if, if uh, uh, JSON was uh, JSON out, uh, the output was a valid JSON, but if the output is not valid JSON, a function call could be done so as to invoke C, and that is how dynamic conversations can also be allowed. Now, what are some good application scenarios for Autogen? So, Autogen paper and uh, the repository that you can see, uh, you know, on GitHub, essentially uh, already templatizes and provides you various applications, some of which I'll discuss here. Okay. So Autogen allows you for uh, math problem solving. So here, for example, uh, think about Khan Academy, right? Let's say there is a student and essentially uh, this guy wants to solve a problem, math problem, okay? Now, either the student can actually solve the problem themselves. You know, the human can write some code and then try to get the code executor execute that stuff. So basically, you know, everything can be done by the student proxy himself, right? By the student himself. And there needs to be just a code platform just to execute the code, okay? So that's called autonomous problem solving. Now, on the other hand, there could be human in the loop problem solving. So the point is that the student tells the LLM based assistant that, hey, uh, you know, here is my problem, write a program to do something and the LLM does some work, but then maybe, you know, it does half baked work. So essentially uh, it solves the math problem uh, using code, but you know, half uh, halfway. So then the human in the loop is required. So the human can participate here and then tell it, hey, this seems slightly off here. Can you repair it and so on, okay? So that's the human in the loop setting. However, sometimes what could happen is that a student, even with the LLM bot, can be stuck at some places, and then it sort of needs help from an expert teacher. Okay, uh, so and that is where you know if the student assistant uh, uh, understands that hey, the student, the uh, human student, is not able to solve the problem, it will basically make a dynamic call to the expert, uh, talking to the expert assistant, and thereby, if required, also getting help from the human expert human out there, and then helping solve the problem. Okay. So essentially, it's more like a very, very uh, convenient uh, student learning framework where the student tries to first solve the problem itself. If it cannot, it makes use of some LLM, right? But if uh, even the, uh, you know, even using the LLM, the student is not able to solve the problem, it sort of makes use of an expert assistant, uh, which is also supported by an expert expert teacher out there. Okay. So the other kind of frame, uh, the kind of application scenario supported uh, in the Autogen framework is multi-agent coding. So here the point is, let's say you have a user who basically has a, a problem to solve, and the way this is coded up in Autogen is to help uh, LLMs, uh, you know, help help generate, uh, uh, you know, help solve supply chain optimization kind of difficult problems using LLMs. Okay, so there is a nice GitHub uh, repository called as OptiGuide, which already has. Uh, you know, code uh, prompts and everything written out nicely to have LLM solve supply chain optimization problems. Uh, but then Autogen works on top of it and uh, uh, helps to write code, which is much faster and much more optimized, right? And much more accurate in nature, okay? So the way this topology works, it basically has three agents. One is the commander agent, the other is the writer, and the third is safeguard. Those are the roles defined for these three agents. However, as you notice, you know, the writer is basically LLM supported, safeguard is also LLM supported, commander is essentially supported uh, using, uh, uh, sorry, using, uh, you know, uh, shell script or Python code executor. Now, if a human, age, a human user essentially has a problem to solve, for example, the problem could be, you know, in a particular optimization uh, setup, 
what if we prohibit uh, shipping from supplier one uh, to roastery two? So it's more like a transportation problem kind of setup. And uh, you know, if you basically prohibit that, prohibit uh, prohibit uh, that particular uh, you know path, then what happens? Okay. So user has this question in mind. They basically put out to the commander. Commander essentially uh, passes that question to the writer, and the code writer is basically going to you know use the LLM to generate code. Now, as the code is generated, uh, the code is going to be given to the commander to execute. The commander is going to use the executor tool here so as to execute and figure out the answer. Now, um, but before executing the code, in fact, yeah, before executing the code, the commander wants to ensure that the code does not have any uh, malicious code or any leakage of information and so on. So the commander, before executing the code, in fact, sends the code to the safeguard checker, right? And this safeguard checker guy, essentially, once it basically says that everything looks good, is going to get back uh, to the commander uh, with the clearance that hey everything looks good okay if everything looks good commander is going to execute uh, the code and then send across the log to the writer uh, so send across the log of the execution uh, to the writer and uh, you know um, uh, uh, you know if if uh, if the log is good you know the writer would say yes i mean the execution was perfect go ahead and provide the answer back to the user and that is when the user gets the final answer However, sometimes what could happen is that the code that the writer wrote is not safe. So, you know, maybe it is not thread safe, it contains malicious code or whatever, right? So essentially in that case, um, uh, in that case, the safeguard guy will not provide the clearance, in which case, you know, the step number three, four, five, and six are going to repeat uh, until you have the clear, uh, until the commander has the clearance, executes the code and outputs, uh, outputs the result to the user, okay? So this is a nice setup of uh, three agents, as you see here, right? So, and essentially on the left, you see a setup with four different agents. There could be other kind of such uh, problem settings or application scenarios where, uh, you know, autogen can be used. So this is a scenario called as online decision making. So several times agents are uh, supposed to be capable of interacting with the environment and make decisions in an online setup. For example, playing games, web interactions, as you see uh, 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 in this particular, uh, uh, in these examples here, right? And also robot manipulation. So agents have to be capable of interacting in these online settings. So on the right, what you see uh, are uh, uh, browser interaction tasks, right? So very simple task, for example, you know, uh, set the slider to the combination 13, 6, 3 and submit, right? Or essentially, you know, how many small echo triangles are there? Select three with the spinner and execute. Keep your mouse inside the circle as it moves around. Those are the tasks that are there as part of this multi verb plus plus benchmark. Now, these are browser interaction tasks that involve utilizing mouse and keyboard actions to interact with the browsers. Now, clearly, uh, you know, to be able to do these tasks, typically what you need is uh, uh, to uh, is to do multiple web manipulation actions, right? And uh, the kind of actions that you need to do so as to satisfy the natural language uh, task that is written at the top in each of these uh, each of these cells, you know the kind of interactions that you need to do must depend on the current state of the web page, right? So therefore, the way uh, this can be implemented in Autogen is using two different agents. One is called as the assistant agent, the other is called as the executor agent, where the executor agent, of course, interfaces with the Miniwob uh, plus plus benchmark, uh, right? And it interfaces with Selenium and other such tools. While the assistant agent is an LLM agent, which basically, uh, you know, so so the uh, so the assistant agent essentially, uh, you know, provides the action decision. So what is the next action that the executor should execute, right? While uh, uh, the executor guy essentially, after executing the action, returns back the reward and the state. So uh, the state basically here imp imp implies the HTML code for the current web page. So as soon as, as soon as it did the action, what happened? What is the current HTML code? So this is how the HTML code basically looks like, and that's the environment state, right? And also basically comes up with a reward saying that, hey, whatever is the task that was specified by the user, is it done or not? Right? If the task is done, well, everything stops. If the task is not done, then the assistant uses this environment state and then comes up with the next action that the executor must execute, okay? So that's another uh, uh, you know application scenario where two agents can talk to each other. Uh, there's also this uh, dynamic group uh, chat scenario. So where you know as you see here uh, you know there is a group chat manager which essentially is managing a conversation between three different agents. So uh, Ellis, uh, user proxy, and Bob. There are three different agents, right? Uh, so the first step that the group chat manager does is to select a speaker. So at any point in the conversation, it selects whom who should speak, right? Um, and then after selecting the speaker, it basically tells the speaker to respond. So for example, if it selected Bob to respond, you know, Bob must respond and give its response to the manager. Now, once the group chat manager gets the response, this guy basically broadcasts that message to everyone else. So Bob basically sent the message, it broadcasts to the user proxy and Alice. 
So this is basically a topology with four different uh, uh, agents where group chat manager is more like a master and sort of manages the, uh, the three agents and the chat uh, conversation between them. These kinds of settings are useful, let's say in customer support scenario, where multiple agents can collaborate in a group chat to provide more comprehensive and efficient uh, and efficient assistance to customers where each agent basically is an expert in some domain. Okay. Now, in this particular case, the group chat, uh, a dynamic group chat uh, manager also needs to have this policy to define who should be the next speaker. So for dynamic speaker selection, and it basically does that uh, um, uh, based on the current context of the conversation and the alignment of the roles. So, you know, uh, of course, group chat manager essentially uses an LLM itself and um, it sort of uh, uses a prompt, which is a role playing kind of a prompt. So, uh, you know, it uses the LLM prompt where the agent is sort of prompted to observe the conversation and then choose a role to further the agent of the conversation. OK, so basically uh, there must. Uh, so, so in general, before you start this group chat conversation, there's a role which is assigned to each of those agents. And uh, uh, whatever the LLM says, basically, uh, you know, the LLM sort of decides who should be the next person uh, or what should be the role of the next person who should participate in the conversation. OK, so it's like passing around mics, right? And the group chat manager decides whom the mic should go to next. OK, here is a conversation uh, which can be managed by this group chat manager. So the uh, user proxy essentially starts the conversation by saying that, hey, uh, I want to find the latest paper about generative agents. OK, now uh, once basically the user proxy set, uh, you know, puts up that message, the group chat manager chooses Alice to. Uh, so, well, there are these other agents, Alice and Bob. Alice is known to do generic tasks. Bob is more like a, uh, you know, a lead, you know, so it basically reviews the code written by Alice and suggests any changes so that Alice can repair them before they are passed on back to the human. So. Since no code has been written so far, it's basically just a query that has come up in the conversation so far. Find the latest paper about generative agents. Uh, you know, um, uh, the the group chat manager chooses Alice to actually write some code. So Alice, uh, so uh, basically uh, Alice replies back saying, uh, to accomplish this, we can utilize the scholarly library in Python, which enables us to search Google Scholar for papers, and here is the code for it. Okay. Now Bob plays its role. Uh, so and at this stage, when the when the code is there, you know, the group chat manager chooses Bob to respond. So Bob plays its role. And then basically says, you know, Google's terms of service do not allow you to use the Google Scholar API, and therefore you might want to choose another path to solve the problem, right? Uh, Alice basically says, okay, I'll revise my code based on your comment, Bob. And then, you know, Bob replies back saying, hey, I'm reviewing the code, your updated code. And then after a bunch of steps of conversation, uh, Bob may be satisfied with the overall code written by Alice, and then it may say, you know, that's correct. Uh, make sure to install feed parser module uh, using the provided command, and then you should be able to execute uh, and, and achieve the goal that is mentioned here. Okay? And at that point, whenever Bob is done with this, uh, the group chat manager sort of understand that it's time to actually, uh, you know, call the user proxy again uh, by, by making sure that in the user proxy, the code executor is uh, invoked. So it's to execute the code and whatever is the output is basically sent back to the user. So, so a dynamic group chat kind of conversation can also be supported in the Autogen framework. Lastly, let me talk about the benefits and guidelines for using Autogen Framework. So Autogen Framework essentially has several nice benefits compared to other multi-agent LLM based systems. Ease of use, so it has built in agents which allow uh, you know, accessing LLMs, tools or human uh, with different levels of autonomy defined configured for the human uh, inputs, right? Modularity, so each agent uh, uh, does its own sort of job. In fact, the code executor is, dif is different from the one who asked for code execution, right? Um, or other code generator is different from the code executor. Uh, each agent therefore can be developed and tested and maintained independently, right? So pro from programmability, pro programmability perspective, users can actually extend or customize existing agents. So it's good extens extensibility of the framework that allows human involvement as well, different levels of human invo involvement. It also allows for uh, agents to collaborate uh, and, and do interactions with each, each other, right? Now, while using autogens, a few things to keep in mind, consider uh, all the default things first. So consider built-in agents, consider, uh, you know, agent top topology, which is simple, and also consider using, uh, uh, you know, existing auto reply methods before uh, customizing things yourself, right? Uh, next, you know, the user proxy agent uh, in general, uh, uh, you know, even if you do not want much of human interactions in the entire scenario, still, you know, at the, in the beginning sort of customize it to as, as, as if human input mode is set to always, right? So in a sense, always ensure that in the beginning, you know, you have human participating in the conversations as much as possible. 
so that you can actually, uh, you know, it's, it's basically like saying you set the log level to extremely verbose in the beginning so that you can debug and tune the prompt and uh, discover corner cases and so on, right? But after you've debugged enough, you basically want to turn off verbosity, verbosity and therefore you can actually say human mode equal to never and let the uh, framework or the entire workflow take care of itself uh, and, and uh, uh, solve further tasks uh, in the same workflow or of the same type, okay? Lastly, you know, although Autogen is so awesome, uh, you know, there are cases and scenarios where other libraries could be useful. So, for example, if you just need a single agent system or just a unidirectional pipeline without much interaction between agents, you could just use Langchain agents or semantic kernel agents as well. OK, so that's it. In this uh, video, uh, you know, I talked about Autogen, which is a framework for development of LLM applications using multiple agents that can talk to each other to solve complicated tasks. Autogen basically has three main interesting components. One is agents. Uh, which are conversable and uh, uh, you know which which are customizable as well uh, and can contain uh, you know uh, um, I mean it, it can support LLM based outputs or human based outputs or tool based outputs right um, uh, Autogen also consists of different patterns for conversation agents can read messages write messages and uh, talk to each other in general using auto replies as well and lastly uh, Autogen supports various workflow patterns so you could basically have a group chat manager kind of a setting hierarchical chat message hierarchical chat kind of a setting or just two agents talking to each other and so on okay if you want to look at code and jupyter notebooks uh, uh, feel free to look at that that link right so that's it for this video thank you for watching hope you like the video connect with me on my linkedin or look at my search on my home page thank you